Today, America sits uneasily with herself. The dream is misting over as America loses her primacy in the world marketplace, and the old enemy is still there, still Japan. Japan bashing, even for congressmen, is the favorite new martial art. Last January, the president himself added to the national embarrassment with a disastrous visit to Japan. The trip had an air of desperation, as the most powerful man in the world half bullied, half cajoled the successful Japanese. The irony is that the staggering success of the Japanese was built on the principles of an American, a management intellectual largely ignored in his own country. Early in the 80s, I arbitrarily picked up Dr. Deming's um, theme that whenever you're having a problem, 80, 85% of the time, it is not people. It's the process, it's the equipment that's being used, it's the design itself, it's something people can't do a thing about. I believe that Dr. Deming has started a quality revolution. What he taught the Japanese can be done by any manager around the world who wants to make the effort. And that his revolution is as important, if not even more important, and certainly as drastic as the Industrial Revolution or even the Agricultural Revolution. And he put into perspectives the troubles I'd had at the Xerox Corporation, which by that time was going down the tubes. They were in real bad trouble. Um, and um, I went to the, to the Sloan Library and took books off the shelf to see what were they teaching in the business schools. And it came as a shock that what Deming was saying was 180 degrees different than what they were saying. It was different. After the war, for a decade, figures showed that we were doing well. We were not. We were doing miserably. And it caught up with us. The style of management called up. <clears throat> we can't get by with it. Dr. W. Edwards Deming, 91 years of age, has long believed the American dream was a mirage. As the man the Americans sent to reconstruct the Japanese economy after the war, he is the original management guru. His seminars are quasi-religious. He still holds young American managers in thrall throughout four days of the Deming Gospel. Responsibility for quality lies at the top. Yet despite his seminal influence on Japan and latterly on America and Europe, it still rankles that his own countrymen have never really understood. People are doing their best. That's our downfall doing their best without knowledge, putting in hard work without knowledge. There's no substitute for knowledge. A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. That was the biblical fate of Dr. W. Edwards Deming until a few years ago. Now the testament sells in thousands. His supporters call themselves Deming Disciples, and most months, 500 of them pay $2,000 each to hear the word. All right. Thank you very much. It's typical of this highly paid international consultant that he should choose to live austerely in a quiet Washington suburb. His basement office, the way Hollywood designers would have drawn it in the 1930s, is presided over by his secretary of nearly 40 years, Cecilia Killian. People that want to see you. Oh, yes. Uh, Admiral Kirkpatrick on 15 February. What he is trying to do is to have President Bush mention you in the State of the Union message at the end of January. President Bush wouldn't be the first. 
The study is cluttered with accolades from presidents of countries and companies around the world. Deming is a statistician by training. He graduated in mathematics from Wyoming University and Yale and spent his early working life counting the American population for the US Census Bureau. Facing this laborious task, Deming set about applying his statistical methods to speed things up. He believes his procedures saved the Bureau several hundred thousand dollars. When America joined the Second World War, Deming's skills were used to train the managers who had to run the production lines for the war effort. Deming's work methods were based on a rigorous application of statistics. Eliminate waste was a key message. He created a dramatic reduction in scrapping and reworking of scarce raw materials. Deming's interest in adopting these methods had been influenced by another American statistician. In 1931, Dr. Schuhart wrote a key text which laid down the principles of statistical process control. What could be measured must be measured exactly. Control charts could show what was in statistical control and what was not. The war, conventional and nuclear, destroyed Japanese industry. When the country's young managers approached the task of renewal, they wanted new styles of management. World War II was a triumph of industrial management and production. The grim evidence of the American superiority in those skills lay all around the Japanese. The Americans sent consultants to advise on better management methods. Among them were Homer Sarason from Western Electric, Dr. Joseph Duran, another management consultant who was steeped in the methods of statistical control. Then in 1950, Dr. Deming arrived to tower over the Japanese both literally and metaphorically. They were sorely afraid that they had established a reputation for a shoddy quality, cheap and worth the price, that they could never undo it. I assured them that it would take only a short while to undo that reputation, develop new reputation. And remember this, when I talked with top management in Japan, I was talking to 80% of the capital. I was back again in six months, back again in another six months, back in 1952, several trips, always teaching the same thing. They listened. I said that in five years, the whole world would know about Japanese quality, that manufacturers the world over would be screaming for protection. They beat it. They did it in four years. Despite the dry statistics, Deming's theories are very sensitive to people. His fishtail diagram illustrates how any system is the sum of its human parts. People in a system must cooperate the one with the other. And the system must have an aim. Everybody must know about it, know what his job is, who depends on him, whom, is he, who, whom does he depend on. Then there's joy and work. Because you feel you belong, you're important, you're really part of the You, you know, and you've done a good job and have a chance to do it. That's all people ask for. <laughs> どんなに歴史